Well, I've gone and printed another carabiner. This time, it's YX Polyers PCCF, polycarbonate carbon fiber. Stick around, let's see what this stuff's all about. We're going to break some things. Welcome back. I'm Scott, Edge of 3D. You know that. You clicked on the channel. So if you, well, closer probably now to a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago, um, company reached out to me, YX Polyer. They uh, they reached out to me and asked me if uh, they could send me a spool of their material to test. And I said, certainly. I'm, I'm open to test any material if somebody wants to send it to me. And then the train kind of went off the tracks a little bit. They started to tell me a timeline and this and that and I need to design this and and do this and and send them the video so they could review it first and I said look um thanks but no thanks um if enough people ask me to review your material I'll I'll use my money that I get from another manufacturer in my budget to purchase your filament and I'll test it then so they immediately, uh, 180 degrees, and they asked me for my address so they could send me the filament and, and have me test it. So here it is, tested it. Um, it's their polycarbonate carbon fiber blend. And according to their specs, it's 15% uh, carbon fiber, so a little, little heavy on the carbon fiber. It is a full one kilogram roll, and it's, it's a plastic roll, so uh, no problems with AMS type stuff there. Uh, right now, as of recording today, it's forty four ninety nine a kilogram on Amazon. And uh, I'll put a link in the video description down below to my Amazon affiliate link if you want to purchase it there. So um, we'll jump over real quick to the specs on this stuff and just get through that. So I've only, um, only tested one other polycarbonate, but hold on here. So... Today I was cleaning up in here a little bit, and I took out a stack of empty filament boxes about like this. And I realized I have a, another polycarbonate. It's, it's a clear polycarbonate, and I've used it actually because I printed these clear polycarbonate lenses for my Reaper project out of it. Now I can't find it. I don't know where it went. So if you happen to see it up there behind me, or, well, you guys can't see over here, but there's nothing up there that's clear. Um, yeah, anyway, so we're just going to look at this. So the PCCF and then the, the PC Max by Polymaker, I mean, I can throw that up there, but it's really not. Um, yeah, it's it's got some, it's got a lot of modifiers in it, and I haven't heat tested it yet, so we're going we're gonna to leave that out for now. Um, x-axis brake load, and that is uh, this right here. All walls, printed flat, pulled on like this till it breaks. And then the layer adhesion is 10 by 10, pulled like this and popped. You guys have seen this enough. You know what that's about. So x-axis layer adhesion, or uh, x-axis uh, tensile strength. This is the point where it peaks out. Some materials peak out right where they break, and other materials peak out and then descend down a little bit before they break. This peaks out 213.53 at 3.15 millimeters, and then it breaks at 3.31. So 16 hundredths of a millimeter, really not even going to see that. Basically, it breaks right where it peaks out. Laird, that's just five walls, 40% infill. Uh, 64.97 kilograms layer, and that's good. Let me show you here on the x-axis break, 213.53. We go over here in, in the chart view and see it. It's right here, and it's right in the middle, see? Um, on the layer adhesion, 64.97. If we go over here and look, 64.97 is right in the middle and pretty good numbers for um, being a material that has inclusions in it, being the carbon fiber. Uh, direct thread yield, 
67.23, and that's a three millimeter screw screwed four millimeters into a printed 2.7 millimeter hole. 67.23 kilograms is what that held, and if we look, it's in the it's in the higher end of the the numbers. So really good numbers there. Heat shield or heat set yield that is a five millimeter diameter, four millimeter deep heat set set into the plastic with a heat set tool, a soldering iron, and then pulled back out. 125.3 kilograms. And if we go find that in the chart view, it's right here. And it's it's in the upper percentile, because that's the top right here is the PPACF. So 125.3. So really good on heat set yield. Izod shock, almost all materials, the harder they are, the more toughness they have over in this area here, in the x-axis, the less they'll accept a shock load. And that's the Izod shock, that's the hammer. Uh, 29.33. And that's still a pretty good number. Um, let's go find it down here. It's, it's right here, and there's a whole lot that goes below that. So 29.33, still pretty good. All right. Jump back over here, and like I say, I had no problems printing with it whatsoever. Loaded up in the CD Plus 4, used their numbers on here, which they called for 250 to 270. I printed at the higher end of that, right at 270. I run the bed at 100 degrees, uh, ran the chamber at 65 degrees. That's how I printed everything. The print quality is really good. Had a couple of minor little spots that showed up. And this would be, I'm trying to look here and see, okay, this, this printed this way. So down here at where there was some support under here, it, it had a little, it was dragging something off over there and left a little gap right here. And then on the top side here, where it was doing the supports up underneath here, it dragged and left some over here. So I'm thinking I might have had my support distance set too far, and that was allowing the next layer to kind of sag down, and it was dragging it along, but it wasn't the the support material wasn't catching it. So that's more a function of the printer settings than it is anything else. Had one little piece that stuck out right here, and now it just finally broke off. I've touched it so many times, but overall it printed really well, and there's no layer lines on there anywhere that you can see. The top surface is pretty good. That's the top surface there. Bottom surface is good. It did pick up some of the carbon fiber um, material or carbon fiber pattern off the build plate, but it printed good. Everything works really well on it. It threads together nice and solid. Um, I got no complaints with it. It was great stuff to print with. Um, one of the tests that's new that I've started doing, and this is thanks to Steve over at Steve Builds, um, I was trying to figure out a way to test the material for how much it would bend before it breaks. But in more of a real world setting where, you know, PTFE tube, which this is pretend PTFE because it's clear. It's not real PTFE. Otherwise, it'd be a milky color. And 15 millimeters to 95 millimeter radius. And we'll we'll go down there. I'll start at 35. I've already done this, so I know where it's going to break at. But at 35 millimeters, it goes through just fine. And the reason for the long piece is you can thank Nick over at Polymaker for that. He said run at least a meter through it because it might be fine here and it might break back here. So 25 millimeter radius. You can get the piece fed in there. And again, it's going through there just fine. 15 millimeters, and I didn't go any smaller than that because it was almost impossible for me to get that in there. And I'll be honest with you, if you've got something that's got that tight of a bend in your system, you need to rework your system and get that bend out of there. But 15 millimeter bend is the tightest I go on here. And as I start pushing it, you can hear it snapping. Now, something I've noticed on this filament, it doesn't clean break. See that? I don't know if there's a coating on the outside of the filament or what, but it doesn't clean break. It breaks, you can hear it break, but it's still there. 
Now, when I try to back it out of there, obviously it's going to break off. Let me break that off. And if I back it out of there real gently, see if I can get it to pull out or not, it snapped off there. So there's something about this filament. Um, I don't know if it's a something on the outside of it, a coating on the outside of it or what, but I can hear it snapping at the 15 millimeter bend, but it's not a clean, it's not clean breaking. It's, it's still holding together. Like there's two breaks right there in that piece and it's still held together. So something interesting with it. Let's jump over right, like I say, I, I don't know, I haven't found their website. I, I know they sell on Amazon and that's what I have up here is this is their Amazon storefront. Uh, they have all kinds of stuff, PLA, TPU, ABS, and, you know, the PCCF that they sent me. So that's that's it right here. Um, PCCF, $44.99, $45. Um, they have PPS, which I have not tested. Their, I haven't tested any of the rest of their stuff. Now, one of the things that I did notice what I really like on this, let's go back here, is they have these 50 gram samples. So if you're wanting to try to print with PA12CF and you don't know if your printer will do it or PPS, um, I don't know, I'm not sure what this breakaway stuff here is. It's got to be support material. But, uh, and then here's some HIPS support material. So there's, they've got different stuff that you can test in 50 gram packs to see either if you just need a little bit of support for one particular print or you're wanting to try to print ABS carbon fiber and you're just not sure if you can do it or nylon PA6, you can, uh, you can buy it in a 50 gram package. So again, no problems with printing, zero problems with bed adhesion, but I am going to preface or, or, or say that I use Frank AF's uh, adhesive mixture formula stuff. Link in the video description down below. Make this stuff at home. I use that on all my printers unless it's a blue bed. If it's one of these blue beds from uh, Big Tree Tech, no, I don't put anything on those. All the rest of them, my carbon fiber beds, my, uh, these these beds here, the, the uh, what are they called now? The PEI, the, the, PEI plates. I put that on everything. Some drips of this, one of these, spread it around, print it. And I know people are going to comment that, well, you don't know how to run a printer. You're right, I don't. I only have 40 of them. I've only been doing this for several years, so I don't know how to use a printer, but I tell you what I do know. And the town I live in is very aerospace centric, and we have a 3D printing company here that prints stuff for aerospace, airplanes, rockets, helicopters. I've been in their place numerous times. They have this sitting around everywhere. And most of the people have a hairdo like mine. If you've seen under here, you'll know that all this is going to do is, is make this up here sticky. Don't have any hair to spray down. Or big glue sticks. Usually I have some of those around too. We're talking big glue sticks. These things were huge. They have those at every print station. They use them. I'm going to use them. Like it or not, that's what I do. I don't have adhesion problems. So that is it. YX Polyer PC Carbon Fiber, 15% carbon fiber, $44.99 for a kilogram, $45 for a kilogram on, on Amazon. So if you've got Amazon Prime, it's free shipping. For me here, I could get this in two days if I ordered it. Link in the video description down below, and that will be an Amazon Associates link. So if you use that, I get a little kickback. Also, a link down below to my coffee account. If you want to keep seeing the materials chart and want me to keep it free and keep adding to it and, and expanding it, it, it takes time and money. Um, both of which I'm always short on, but uh, every little bit helps. So, YX Polyer, PCCF, I have not used it for anything really important yet. I'm sure at some point I will. If you've got experience with it, leave me a comment down below. I do have some parts that have, that have gone through the annealing process, so I'm getting ready to do some heat testing with it, and we'll see if their claimed 140 degrees heat rejection is, is true. So they say if you have experience with it, 
let me know. Uh, my experience with the company themselves after they reached out to me and I told them I wouldn't uh, wouldn't follow their rules. Um, they've been very, uh, very responsive. Uh, I had a question about annealing just a couple of days ago and I sent an email off to them and I got a reply back right away. Now, this email obviously was sent at like four o'clock in the morning. So it was four in the afternoon over there in China where they're at, but uh, they responded right away. So I, I don't know if that's because I've got marketing people's email and that's who I'm getting, but it gives me a sense that maybe if you need some help from this company, they are easy to get a hold of. So YX Poly or Amazon link down below. I appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to watch these all the way to the end. Hit the thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Hit the little bell icon. It's down there somewhere. Somewhere down here is a little bell icon. Hit that. It'll let you know when I drop the next video. Hit the subscribe button. That helps the algorithm. Stick around for more. And as always, peace out.